Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of PowerPoints with Pastor T. This is the official live and online ministry of the Carter Metropolitan CME Church. I'm Pastor T, and I'm so excited to worship with you. Today, I'm coming to you from our beautiful sanctuary here at 1510 West Grand Boulevard. It feels good to be here. I feel God's presence here, and I'm so happy to share it all with you today. Our order of worship is song, prayer, scripture. We'll feature a man of God's moment. We'll affirm our faith together, and then I'll share the word that God has placed on my heart. Let's set the atmosphere with a great hymn of the church. This morning, we will join with the choir and congregation of the Alfred Street Baptist Church of Alexandria, Virginia, and sing together, Whole to God's Unchanging Hand. Good morning and God bless you. I'm Minister Nicola King of Carter Metropolitan CME Church and I'm leading us this morning in our prayer. Every head bow, every eye close. Please join me. Father God, this morning we say thank you for another day. 
God, we say thank you for your new mercies and your grace. Father God, we thank you for giving us another chance, God, because you didn't have to do it. But because you are so merciful, because you are so great, and because you love us so much, you gave us another chance. And God, not only did you wake us this morning, but Father God, you protected us while we slept. God, our homes were made safe. Our cars are still in our driveways. Our children are safe. And so God, we thank you this morning for these things. Father God, I ask you now just that you would look in on this service, God. This is a new thing that we're doing, Lord. We've never had to worship away from our sanctuaries, but God, because of you, because of our faith, we're able to do this. Spiritual proximity has nothing to do with physical proximity. And so God, I give you glory and I thank you that right now you're moving into living rooms and bedrooms and kitchens, wherever people are watching God, you are there as well. And so God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you, God, for releasing healing over people this morning, God. There are those that are sick, but God, you are still the God of healing. You are still our great doctor. And so I thank you, God, as you move into the homes and you begin to heal people and you release healing all around. God, right now, people are nervous and they're confused, but they don't need to be. They just need to remember, God, that you are in charge, that even this pandemic, God, is of your choosing. You are in charge of everything. And although we can't understand it now, God, we know that there's a reason behind it. God, right now I'm asking that you encourage faith in your people. We need you. Mm, God, we need you right now. We need you to do some things for us, God. We need you to calm our hearts, God. We need you to mend our broken hearts. We need you to bind up our wounds, God. We've lost people, God. And the only place we can turn at this point is you. It should always be the first place we turn. But God, right now, some people can't see it. And so, God, I ask that you encourage them to turn to you, God. That you make your presence known, God, in such a way that they can't deny that it's you. Father God, you say where two or three gather, you will be in their midst. And right now, God, I know that although we aren't physically together, you are in our midst. You come to help your people. And so I thank you and I glorify you. God, I give you the honor and the praise right now, along with my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God, I glorify you. I magnify you. I lift you up, God, because none other is greater than you, God. You can do everything but fail. And so, God, right now we say thank you. God, continue to look in on us. God, continue to protect us. God, continue to bless us. We are your people, God, and we love you and we trust you. God, look in now on our pastor. God, I just ask that you release healing to her, God. You, you calm her nerves, God. You keep her lifted up, God. She is your vessel and we need her leadership. And so God, right now I ask you just to bless her with calmness, God. With peace, God. Continue to always be with her and protect her in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to look at all, look in on all the members of the church, God. Not just Carter, God, but the entire church, God. Bless your people. Keep them safe, God, from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. Keep them continuously covered in the blood of Jesus. Because we know that that's the thing that keeps us safe, that we're covered in that blood that Jesus gave us. So, God, look in on us. Protect us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name is Tanya Brown. And my name is Thomas Brown. Today, we will be doing the responsive reading of Psalms chapter 16. I'll begin. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out liberations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, 
You alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsel me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him and my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. Together we say, you, you make known to me the path of life. life. You, you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The, the word of God for the people of God. Together, thanks be to God. Good morning, Carter Metropolitan. This is Stuart Calvin Batillo coming to you during this worship hour to share in this month's Man of God moment. I want to share with you a few thoughts and some words of encouragement. In the midst of all that is going on with the COVID-19 pandemic, many of us have lost loved ones, lost jobs, and unfortunately, some of us have actually lost hope. Some have even begun to question God. Why are these things happening? And where is God? And as much as we are questioning whether we can trust him, God is actually looking to see if he can trust us. At this time, circumstantial faith just won't do. So I know some of you are asking, well, Calvin, what is circumstantial faith? My definition of circumstantial faith is when we're faithful when everything is going good. We're faithful when the circumstances are in our favor. We're faithful when the odds are in our favor. God is looking to see who is going to be faithful both in good and bad times. God is looking for a few good men that will make the decision to be unshaken during this unprecedented time. I know there's a lot of uncertainty and varied emotions and anxiety going on, but the good news is God is more powerful than the pandemic. Know that God has not forgotten about us, so we must continue to praise and pray our way through. A breakthrough is closer than we think. We've come this far, it's too early to give up, and at no time should we ever give up on God's promises. So to the men and women of God, I say to you, this is the time to be firm in your loyalty to God. This is not the time to be saved and scared, courageous, then confused, trusting, yet terrified, prayerful, but still pressed and puzzled, be a believer and then still be bothered, and then say we have faith, yet we're still fearful. So while we're in this quarantine and we're asked to stay at home, God has put a stop to movement and has given us an opportunity to recalibrate and get some things in order. Realize that our faithfulness will prove to be essential in getting us through. Trust that God has something much greater for us on the other side of this pandemic. So until we meet again, God bless you all and stay safe. Good morning, Carter family. Would you please join me in affirming our faith? In whom do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I am excited because there is indeed a word from the Lord. The word comes to us today from the gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Beginning at the 50th verse, Hear these words from the Passion Translation of the Bible. 
Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany. He lifted his hands over them and blessed them in his love. While he was still speaking out words of love and blessing, he floated off the ground into the sky, ascending into heaven before their very eyes. And all they could do was worship him. Overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy, they made their way back to Jerusalem. Every day, they went to the temple, praising and worshiping God. The message for today is entitled simply, What Do I Do Now? The disciples had a very tumultuous 72 hours. Uh, one minute, they were eating dinner with their friend. Then, they were watching as their leader was being arrested and dragged from the Garden of Gethsemane. Next, they stood on the edges of the action as their pastor was prosecuted and persecuted and tried. They scattered in different directions as their savior was nailed to a cross and lifted high above the earth. This was not some stranger. This was not some casual acquaintance. This was their teacher, their confidence builder, their miracle worker. I'm sure that the disciples were wondering, how do we move on with our lives now that our friend is gone? How do we make ministry happen now that our pastor is dead? I'm sure the disciples said he, he gave us power to do miracles. When he was with us, we could lay hands on the sick and they would get well. When he was with us, we never ran low and we never ran empty. When he was with us, we had access to answers. What's, what's going to happen now that he's gone? Most of us feel like we've been asking ourselves the same question. What do I do now that there's a stay-at-home order? What do I do now that I can't go to work? What do I do now that I've lost my job? What do I do now that my loved one is sick? What do I do now that my loved one has died? What do I do now that they're talking about lifting the stay-at-home order? What do I do if somebody is still sick and they don't know it? What do I do now? Young folk are asking, what do I do now that I don't get to go to prom? What do I do now that I won't have a graduation ceremony? Pastors are asking, what do I do now that the doors of the church have to close? What do I do now that all of the events that were planned uh, for the spiritual and financial needs of the church have to be canceled? Expected mothers are asking, what do I do now if I go, to, go into labor? What do I do if the hospital isn't quite ready for me yet? Uh, single folk are asking, what do I do now that I can't? can't go out and date and married folk are asking, what do I do now that I'm still stuck in the house with my spouse? My point is that everybody is dealing with some version of this question. We want to know now that there has been an end to what we knew as normal. Now that there has been an end to what was familiar. Now that we are experiencing grief and loss in ways that we never expected. What do we do now? The disciples didn't know what to do. But then Mary showed up with news of the resurrection. They, they didn't know what to do, but Jesus showed up and sat with them one more time. One last time, Jesus reminds them of the assignment. He says, go out into all the world. Tell everybody about me. I've already given you power. I've already given you permission. But now, because of what I have accomplished on the cross, I give you authority to move in ministry in ways that you never have before. I give you the authority to make plans and implement strategies and shake up tradition and represent me to the world so that they'll know that I'm still 
here. Even if they don't see me, they'll see you and know that I'm still here. When you open your mouth, they'll hear me through your voices and they'll know that I'm here. I know that we are facing so many questions in this season of our lives, but if you're at home wondering, what do I do now? I'd like to suggest that you just remember that God is still with you. Watch this. The disciples thought that Jesus was gone for good, but Jesus showed up to remind them that he lives in every word that he said. He lives in every promise that he released. He lives in every memory that's written in and on the hearts of every believer. The disciples were scared that the physical absence of Jesus meant an end to his presence. But because Jesus overcame the power of death and because the power of the Holy Spirit defies even death, the physical absence of Jesus made a way for the tangible yet invisible presence of his power. So now the body could be absent, but his power could be present. God's plan required that Jesus would need a physical body for the purpose of sacrifice. But once that body had had fulfilled its duties, once that body had completed its assignment, it was no longer essential. It was no longer necessary because the spirit of God would now be able to invade the body of every believer. Watch this. Jesus no longer needed eyes to see because by the power of his spirit, he could see clearly through your eyes. Jesus no longer needed a mouth to talk because by the power of his spirit, he could speak through you. Jesus no longer needed hands and feet because he was about to order your steps to the place, to the right person, to lay hands, to release the healing that is necessary. Jesus had one body. But now, because of his triumph on Calvary's hill, his presence and power can be in every body. So what are you saying, preacher? What are you talking about today? Well, if you call yourself a believer, you know that the spirit of God has no boundaries. If you call yourself a believer, you know that the spirit of God has no limitations. That's why you can be praying here and God can be moving over there. That's why you can be decreeing and declaring the promises of God here and God can establish breakthrough way over there. Just because you can't see Jesus doesn't mean that he's not busy moving. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean that he's not making a way. Just because you can't see him doesn't mean that he's absent or unconcerned or ignoring you or unable to handle your issue. I'd like to suggest Suggest that when you can no longer see Jesus, perhaps you need to look on the inside of you. Maybe you need to remind yourself that the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now lives in you. Maybe you need to reread the promise that says, and lo, I will be with you always, even until the end. Maybe you need to have the confidence in the fact that neither death nor life shall separate separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. If Christ Jesus is in you, then that means he's still with you. The prophet said that his name shall be called Emmanuel which means God with us. He came to the world to be God with us and when his physical presence left the world, he left his spirit here with us. He was God with us during slavery and he's God with us through the current presidency. He's God with us during the civil rights movement and he's God with us through the calamity called Corona. He was God with us then and he's God with us now. And you can see him, you can hear him, and you can feel him if you would just open up your heart.
Ah, so when we meet the disciples in our text, they have reunited with their friend and now Savior. He escorts them away from Jerusalem to the area called Bethany. And the disciples are now given the opportunity and privilege to witness Jesus ascending into heaven. Can you imagine seeing so many incredible and impossible things happening in one weekend? Your body the Bible says that as he was ascending, he was blessing his disciples. The, the translation of the text that I use for this morning says that he blessed them in his love. I, I want you to see Jesus ascending into heaven. See him being lifted higher and higher into the air. I want you to hear him telling the disciples, listen, I love you. You can do it. You can make it. Don't be afraid. Hear Jesus saying, it's going to be hard, but you're going to make it. You, you're going to get tired, but you have my strength. I know that it looks like I'm far away, but as long as you can hear me clearly, you have the assurance that I am still here. I am still with you. Watch this. Jesus used up all of his goodbye while blessing his friends. Y'all, I'm so thankful that he didn't just bless the disciples as a group, but I feel like he, he blessed each of them individually as well. Uh, I bet he told Peter, don't let your past keep you from pushing forward. I bet he told John, I know your heart is breaking, but I'll always be nearer than breathing and closer than hands and feet. I bet he told James, keep on fishing. Uh, he probably told Andrew, don't be discouraged. Even the quiet ones can be a strong witness for my glory. While his physical presence was departing, Jesus made sure that he filled the void with some encouragement. When you don't know what to do now that things are out of control, when you don't know what to do now that things are in chaos and disarray, when you don't know what to do now that you have more questions than answers, you need to remember that Jesus never leaves us empty. Jesus never leaves us lacking. Jesus always fills us up. When you don't know what to do, you need to remember that just as much as the disciples were worshiping him as he was ascending, Jesus was loving on them too. Jesus didn't just love us when he went to the cross, but Jesus loved us as he, as he reminds us that we can do all things through him. We know that he loves us when we realize that he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve. We know that he loves us when he promises to give power to the weak and to them who have no might. He increases strength. As much as the disciples were praising God because now they knew and understand, uh, understood everything Jesus had been teaching and preaching. Now they understood just who he was. They, now they realized what their ministry was all about. But this was also a moment where Jesus was pouring his love on them. Somebody ought to shout right now because God's love is so overwhelming. God's love is never ending. God's love is absolutely reckless. Finally. And, and this is the part I've been so excited about getting to. Your Bible says that the disciples kept on worshiping. They kept on praising, but they didn't keep it to themselves. They kept on shouting. They kept on singing, but they didn't contain their praise in just the space that they were in. Your Bible says that they went back to Jerusalem and made a beeline for the temple. And there at the temple, they continued to praise God. Now, now some of you probably don't think that's a big deal because the temple is where you're supposed to praise God, right? The temple is where you celebrate. The temple would have been the closest place where people could have accessed God in that ancient context. But, but here's what I want you to consider. 
The temple was a place where tradition, where traditions were exalted and rules were enforced. The temple was the place where rituals were enacted and grace came with a price. The temple had become less known for being the place of praise and more known for being the place where you showed up because that's what good religious folk do. Uh, the condition of your heart d- didn't matter. Even, even your need to be healed would be put on the back burner if you showed up on the wrong day because it was more important to keep the law than it was to see people healed, delivered, and set free. The temple was reverenced as the place where God lived, but it didn't seem like too many people were really wanted access to God. I said something right there. This was the same temple where Jesus took off his belt and whipped people and turned over tables because there was more emphasis on making money than there was on making sacrifices. Your Bible says that the disciples brought their praise with them to the temple. Listen, the praise they brought with them was not ordinary. The praise they brought with them did not come from a sense of duty, but the praise that the disciples brought with them was filled with knowledge. They now knew who Jesus was and that he had come to save the world. The praise that the disciples brought with them was filled with hope. They believed that Jesus was going to be with them no matter what the challenges were. The praise that the disciples brought with them was filled with joy. They knew that they weren't alone. They knew that they didn't have to do ministry alone. They didn't have to do life alone. All they had to do was trust in him who would not not leave them. They brought their praise, watch this, to a place where praise had been limited. They brought their praise to a place where praise was contained. They brought their energetic, vibrant, spirit-filled, and unconditional kind of praise to a place that wanted only a form of godliness and not the power thereof. Here's my question. What are you going to bring with you when these doors are open once again? Will you have a praise that's deeper? Because now in this season, you're beginning to know God in a deeper way. Will you bring the blessing that you received at your house with you when you come back to this house? If this is the place where God lives, If this is the place where we honor God, then it's got to be the place where your praise is welcome. We should not just acknowledge God out of a sense of duty, but we should be magnifying God because he's worthy. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us because he loved us so much that he suffered even for us. And even while he was ascending into heaven, he was still pouring out his love on us. I I want you to hear me when I say God loves you and, and you can make it. God is with you. God fights for you. God empowers you. God won't leave you. And most of all, God is worthy. After 72 hours, the disciples knew more about God than they had known from three years of following and serving him. Uh, What they learned in in such a short period of time changed the way that they thought, and it it shifted the way that they worshiped. Uh, What are you going to do after this pandemic, after this lockdown, after our issues, after our questions? Well, after all is said and done, we ought to know God better. We ought to feel him closer. We we ought to have so many reasons to praise him for his mighty acts and his excellent greatness. Y'all, in spite of it all, God has been good to us. God is making a way for us. And that ought to be a reason to motivate you. That ought to excite you. That ought to transform you so to the point that you see him more clearly and you love him more dearly and cannot wait to bring your praise 
back into the temple. Today we wrestled with the question, what do I do now? When that question was directed at the closing of our church doors, the answer was a 9 a.m. conference call or an 11 a.m. online service. For all of the other what do I do nows that we may be dealing with, let me recommend that our best answer is Jesus. He's the only one who will sustain us. He's the only one who will help guide and direct us. He's the only one who will keep us in the midst of the pandemic or pressure or problems or persecution and peril. He lives and he is God with us even now. I want to pray with you. God, remind us that you are here when we can't see you. Remind us that your power is strong and activated on the inside of us. Remind us that sometimes when we're waiting on you to move, that you're just waiting on us to make moves in you. Thank you, God, for loving on us, and we love on you. Thank you for blessing us, and we bless you. Thank you for helping us, even in the midst of the problems we are facing, to bring praise back to the places that need it the most. May you be glorified, exalted now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I want to pray with you today. Just repeat this prayer after me. It's real simple. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of your grace. Forgive me and make me new. Come and live in me and change my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And because of that, I am saved. Hallelujah. If you, if you prayed that prayer, I want to hear about it. Heaven is rejoicing and I want to rejoice with you. If you prayed that prayer with me or if you have a prayer request, I want to pray with you. All you have to do is drop us a line at powerpoints1510 at gmail.com. And now, here are your church announcements for Sunday, April 19th. Awesome people of God. This is Dr. Faith Allen bringing you greetings. I heard about the Pass the Peace Challenge, and I just wanted to say this. Stay hopeful, stay joyful, stay thankful, and stay prayerful. But most of all, I wanted you to know God loves you, and so do I. Thanks again for tuning into another episode of PowerPoints with Pastor T. This is the official live and online ministry of the Carter Metropolitan CME Church. We certainly hope that you are being blessed by our interactive worship services. If you are, tell somebody, invite somebody to tune in with you on Sundays at 11.
Remember, if our ministry has not been uploaded to Facebook by 11, rest assured that it is waiting patiently for you on YouTube. Just check us out on our Carter Metropolitan Detroit media page. If you're ever in the Motor City, we would love for you to visit us right here at 1510 West Grand Boulevard, right on the corner of West Grand and Warren. We are so thankful for our worship leaders who have joined us and for the very special people who passed the peace to us. Don't forget to pass the peace to three people as soon as our interactive worship experience ends. You can even do it on Facebook simply by putting God loves you and so do I on the page of someone you know and love. And now, I hope that you are ready for the benediction. I want you to look me in my face. And hear me when I say to you that it is indeed my prayer to God that the Lord bless you and keep you. That the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon all of you and give you peace. That's the way Bishop Williams would do it. Here's what I'm going to say. I pray that you would remember that God is still with you. I pray that you would remember that God is in you. And I hope that you're ready to bring your praise back to the places where your praise ought to live. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Be glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all God's children said amen, amen, and amen. All right? Go in peace. And remember, you've got power. Stop laughing! Stop laughing! Stop laughing. Oh.